Oj, 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 oj. Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex. It's Gordon. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks to Patreon. Follow us to account, subscribe, and the like button. There we I'm a truly great man! All evidence to the contrary, love. To day. Uh, we have. We have a uh, glitch of the matrix. We have a video. This is called uh, Masterclass, the unplayable Yorker. So it's going to be explaining the Yorker to us in detail. Has anyone come up with a completely never before seen Yorker and called it the New Yorker? <laughs> Shut up! Can you explain a Yorker? It's a bowler's throw that does a Yorkie thing. It was actually created first by somebody who was perfecting it while they were bowling and unfortunately struck their York their 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 Yorkshire Terrier. No. Welcome to our masterclass regarding the Yorker. With me is Nasser Hussain, the former England captain and batsman. Nasser, define the Yorker for me. Well, a Yorker bush is basically a ball that lands somewhere near this white line called the popping crease. It is where the batter stands generally. That's where they straddle that white line. And what the bowlers try to do is come in and get it as close to that line, as close to the bottom of your bat as they can. The reason they do that because it's very difficult to get underneath it. It's mainly used oh, okay. in white ball cricket as a defensive tactic, but it's also used quite a bit in red ball cricket when maybe there's a bit of reverse swing going around. Going okay. to the impact of not being able to get under the ball from a batting perspective and, and why that's so important for myself as a bowler. Well, batsmen when batting in test match cricket, the length ball out there becomes a danger ball because it moves around. In white ball cricket, that ball actually, what we define as the slot, bounces up to the middle of the bat. So it gives you good le leverage to hit the ball from the middle of the bat as it bounces up, and it's got so many areas you can hit that ball too. When it's bouncing here, the middle of the bat almost goes out of play because it's always hitting the toe of the bat. In our era, when people like Wakar and Wazim were hitting that hole constantly, we didn't have the fancy shots they have now, so we were constantly just getting it away. And also, captains can set a really good feel to it because they know, or they used to know, where you can hit the Yorker at best. And the volume of runs that are derived from missing that length and hitting that length are what? Well, if you look at a Hawkeye example that we've got, and look at the difference between the slot, the strike rates, the slot, when you get your length, what you'd like in test match cricket, at 229, that strike rate, but if you get it absolutely spot on where the batter is standing, that strike rate drops to 92. That is a huge difference. That's the difference between winning a game and losing a game. So if you can get it right here, the batsman can't do much about it. If you get it wrong, you usually disappear out of the park. Oh, yes. <laughs> what a way to end the cricket match. Very informative. Perfect Yorkers at searing pace. Bang, bang goes Bumra. What about as a bowler, Bish? How difficult is it to hit this line consistently? And when do you go for that delivery? That's a good question. We've got a couple of balls down here. I'll just use one of these. <clears throat> um, first of all, your grip, whether you, want Nasser, as a bowler, want to try to execute the Yorker with a seam up positions. A lot of bowlers now are holding a cross seam to get better traction on it. And I think the first thing, we hear a number of bowlers like Lasset Malinga practicing bowling at a shoe which would have been placed where your He has a three-quarter delivery. That line. Yeah. Or, other bowlers would aim at the crease line. Some would aim as a, at the base of a stump or halfway up the stump. But you must know and practice 
where you're releasing the ball to have some feel in order to know sure. where do I release this. Very, very important. Would you, would you drop your arm at all? You mentioned Milling there. I played with Darren Goff, uh, who was a brilliant Yorker bowler. Is that helpful, that sort of slightly more slingy action? It could be because the margins for error for someone like a Lassit Malinga would be less. It would be sort of a flat trajectory. Yeah, because it's coming at it sideways versus straight. Guys who would deliver it from high and create a steeper angle. Mm -hmm. But again, it's something that has to be practiced assiduously because not many folks can bowl it consistently. And the reason it has to be practiced and those margin of errors you mentioned is because if you get if you it you miss wrong, it, right. then nowadays the modern player has, has these funky oh, wow. where they can hit you 360. So they can Dang. get in front. So if you think of a ball coming to land here, someone like a Butler or De Villiers immediately, I think Dilshan started wow. it with the Dil scoop. That's impressive. You get it before it bounces. Now you think that's going to hit you straight in the head. I would not recommend this shot without <laughs> a helmet on. And it flies over there. So you put a man back there and they do that. And then they go back in their crease. So a ball that was landing there, you now can get under and hit. Then they go this way, they go that way. They've got so many shots. And that's why, if I can borrow the ball, that's why the game has changed, right? In my day, sorry to talk about my day, <laughs> but that used to be your Yorker box with that margin of error you just you talked about. That was your mark, well, stop. Okay, so nowadays, because of the change in regulations, anything down the leg side is a wide. So these deliveries come in, mm. right? Because now batsmen are going back in their crease, these deliveries are now length. And because batsmen are scooping like Butler and De Villiers, these deliveries now come. So you remember that original box that was really wide? That box now, you have to hit that. Otherwise, Butler, De Villiers, Coley, Doney are smashing you all over the place. And if you go back to that original Hawkeye of strike rates, that's perfect. You get it wrong against Rishabh Pant or MS Dhoni or Virat Kohli, they will smash you out the ground. So it's an additional layer of difficulty. If he moves back, my Yorker's got to be fuller. If he's forward of the line, my Yorker's got to be slightly shorter. Let's have a look at some of the great examples of the Yorker and it just being on target in terms of line. A little bit full, but it gets through because of pace. Bang on target, you get your success. Batsman will come down. So. It's just a little bit shorter of that length. And as you said, Nasser Hussain, they try to scoop. A Yorker is gold if you can get it spot on. So great example of the box getting smaller and bigger in modern day cricket. And the other thing that's changed in modern day cricket is they now use two of these, two white balls. So when we used to just use one, it used to reverse swing. So I mentioned Wakar and Waz in that great final, was it 92 World Cup final? Wazin got it reverse swinging. That gives you just that bit of move. And that ball at 90 mile an hour is swinging. It is so difficult to play these funky shots because by the time you go down, the ball has cramped you or moved away. With two white balls, it doesn't quite do as much at the end. So those examples you showed of Boomer and everyone else, they are absolutely spot on. A world-class Yorker bowler will get into any white ball side just for nailing his Yorkers. Very informative video. Learn, I, I feel like we learned more about cricket in that video than any other video. Yeah, I actually know what a Yorker is. Yeah, and I guess it, it also, it's location. It isn't necessarily the spin you put yeah. on the ball at all. A Yorker in and of itself is just get it on that line. Yeah, yeah. Or run that line. Yep. Which, yeah, it's it's so impressive. Um, what they And then also the, what, how they've adjusted to being able to hit the Yorker. Yeah. He says now... Uh, as opposed to his day, uh, but some I did have a question. He said, "Plays with two white balls." What does what does that mean? I have no idea. It's the first I hear of that. I didn't know there were different colored balls that they use based on certain things. I mean, yeah. And then he said, "White ball or red ball cricket." I'm, I'm I, I, I'm, I thought yeah. they were just different color balls. I didn't know. Like, is it a different game if you play yeah. with a white? I, or red? I did not know. No idea. Uh, so that that confused me. Um, but yeah, it was very well explained. Uh, it's oh, I, give us more 
instructional videos like this. Yeah, that was because uh, that that helped me. Now I will forever now be looking when we watch a cricket video. I'll be looking for Yorkers, and I know what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool video. What other throws are there then, though? God, I haven't the foggiest. Well, idea. I guess there's spin the 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 spinners. I have no so idea. So there's a spinner, a Yorker, power throw, maybe? I don't know. No idea. Change I don't it. know. I would love an instructional video like that that said, here are the most common throws and what to look for. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't have the foggiest idea. Neither do I. Neither do I. And I'm really, really intelligent. So if I don't understand, Rick definitely doesn't understand. This is true. Because he's an idiot. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let us know what other uh, cricket videos, informational videos, or others that we can react to down below. Josh!